Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Friday, January the 3rd. Uh, we're going to take a first look at Friday six game NBA slate, go position by position, talk about the plays that stand out to me the most, uh, taking a first look at the slate. Uh, as we go, we will build out a core of five plays. Uh, these are five players that I see just looking at this slate the night before that really catch my, uh, that catch my eye. Um, if you guys want to get access to all of my updated content, uh, like I say all the time, these are first look videos. All the videos on my YouTube channel are just kind of my early thoughts. If you want to get all of my updated, in-depth thoughts on the slate, you can definitely check out my exclusive content that I have available on Patreon. I do provide a full written article. It's usually 8 to 10 pages long, depending on how many games there are, uh, where I fully break down the slate, talk about all my favorite plays, hit on the guys that I like most at each position, why I like them. Uh, you can get access to my article. I build a, or I make a lineup vi uh, building video that I record in the afternoon, usually post it around 4, 4.30 Eastern Time on Patreon, where I pretty much talk through the slate again, give some of my updated thoughts, while also looking at different lineup builds uh, for that night's slate, kind of how I'm looking to build out my lineups. And then at 5.30, I do post my updated core plays. Uh, these are the guys that I like the most on the slate. Just given the um, update, up-to-date injury news that we do have, I do constantly update the core plays as well up until lock. So uh, if stuff changes, I'll make sure to let you guys know. You can get in our Discord chat uh, where I'm up in there up until lock answering questions, building out my lineups, just kind of talking through the slate. So much content throughout the day I post over on Patreon. So check out all the stuff I have to offer over there. If you have enjoyed these YouTube videos and if they have helped you, uh, the Patreon content will probably be even more helpful uh, so definitely would appreciate it if you would check that out. Uh, drop a like on the video as well. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. You can click that notification bell, um, so that way you get notified every time I upload. If you haven't yet, you can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is linked down below, at DFS by Noah. Patreon, um, or my Patreon page is also linked down below as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at point guard for today. <laughs> So on DraftKings, we got LeBron at 11,200 in a great spot against the Pelicans. We also have James Harden for 10,900. I think on DraftKings, with their uh, with their like pricing for today, James Harden is clearly the top option for me at 10,900. You could argue that, well, I, would, I don't even think it's an argument. LeBron is definitely in the better matchup, but James Harden it should never be cheaper than LeBron. Like this guy, he had a floor game last game against Denver, and he still put up 54 DraftKings points. Like, nobody has the upside floor combo that James Harden has. He's gone for over 50 DraftKings points in 10 straight games. Like, even on his bad nights, you're still getting 50-plus from Harden. He's going to play huge minutes as well, 36 to 38 minutes. I mean, we can just look at his rates this season. His rates are much better than a guy like LeBron, than a guy like Anthony Davis, who are some of the other studs that we have on the slate. Uh, Harden is more productive than those guys. So he is the guy that I lean to as my favorite stud option, like, Harden was way too cheap last slate, and he was pretty popular. He's way too cheap today. I imagine he's going to be popular, but you kind of just like have to play him. I mean, 10900 is just a really dumb price for James Harden. He's averaged 1.63 fantasy points per minute this season, 37, nearly 38% usage rate, 36% assist percentage. Like, I know it's not a great matchup. Philly, really good defensive team. I think they play pretty slow as well. I believe they're like middle of the pack. They're 19th in pace this season, but... This is a game that should stay close. I'm pretty sure we don't have a lot or we don't have a total yet, but it does have a four point spread. So it's expect to be a close game. I mean, I imagine this game is going to have one of the higher totals. So I really like Harden today on DraftKings. I think he's the stud that I definitely want to build around. I do prefer him over uh, LeBron. He's cheaper than LeBron. $600 difference between him and Anthony Davis. I prefer Harden there as well. Harden just too cheap on DK. Like this guy should be near 12K pretty much almost every slate. The fact that he's 10 9 today way too cheap. On Yahoo, I think it's a little bit of a uh, like conversation. I don't think Harden's just like a lock and load on Yahoo. I mean, he's $59. You got LeBron for 54, Davis for 53. I like all three of those guys. Usually you can always find cheap guys on Yahoo that are in play. Like their pricing is so soft. It'll be pretty easy to get those three guys into your builds. Obviously, probably not all three, but you might be able to build around two of the three. I mean, Harden's still probably my favorite of the three. Like, I just think his floor and ceiling combo is just so much higher than anybody else on this slate. Like, even if Davis has, a, like, a ceiling game, like, a ceiling game from Anthony Davis is probably, like, 65, 70 fantasy points. I mean, he's had an 81 fantasy point game against Minnesota this season where he went for 57 and 6. Like, that's his real, that's, like, his legit ceiling. But 
like a 40 point game or like a 41 and 9 game that he had against the Pelicans earlier this season like that was kind of a ceiling game from Anthony Davis whereas Harden like I didn't mean to do that uh Harden's ceiling like this guy has pretty much 60 65 point upside every time he steps on the floor like Harden's 60 65 70 like his his upside is just so much higher than uh Davis and LeBron so I do prefer to roster him on Yahoo as well even though there's a little bit of a salary difference definitely my top stud on the slate uh, but there are some other good or some other point guards in good matchups today. Like Damian Lillard's in a really good matchup against the Wizards. 9,700 though, really tough to pay 9,700 for Damian Lillard, even in a great matchup. Especially when you factor in that Harden is like 1,200 more. Like I'm just gonna try and pay up for those studs if I can. I'm gonna just try and get up to Davis or Harden or LeBron if possible. A uh, big injury we're gonna need to watch at point guard is the status of Kimball Walker. 8,300 at home against the Hawks. Quite possible that he sits out this game. He was a game time to or he's listed as a game time decision. Um, he missed Thursday pr Thursday's practice with flu like symptoms. Uh, I mean, given that I don't think we have a spread on this game right now. We yeah we don't have a spread on this game. Given that they're playing the Hawks, like I think it's quite possible that Kimba sits out today. I'm going into this slate assuming he's out. Hopefully we get some news like after shoot around. We should get some news in the afternoon. Uh, at least get like an update on Kimba. I'm assuming he's out, so we'll talk about some of the beneficiaries there. Uh, but Lillard, you do have who I talked about in a good spot. I don't think I'm going to be going to any like the other point guards, though, like Trey Young, Westbrook, Ben Simmons. I'll probably be looking elsewhere off those guys. I mean, Simmons in a good spot against a fast-paced Rockets team. I just never play Ben Simmons, though, when like the Sixers are fully healthy, especially like at 8,100. There's just other guys I'd rather play today. Like, I mean, Drew Holiday's for 7,400 feels really, really cheap really underpriced I guess I mean this is a guy that's giving you pretty much like a 40 point floor this ceiling or this season he had a massive game against the Lakers earlier this year uh, 60 DraftKings points in 40 minutes pretty sure Brandon Ingram was out that game or Lonzo Ball might have been out that game one of the two uh, so Drew Holiday at 7400 I do like quite a bit between like Booker Rubio and Holiday I think um, Holiday is probably my favorite guy to go to between those three uh, Lonzo, a little bit of a, of a revenge game for him going back to uh, the Staples Center to face the Lakers. I think he's already faced the Lakers once, or no, Lonzo was the one that was out last time they faced the Lakers, but revenge game for Lonzo, first time facing the Lakers since getting traded to the Pelicans. I mean, the dude's been balling recently. He had his best game of the season, last game against Houston, 40 minutes, 65 DraftKings points, had 27 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. Like, I think in tournaments, Lonzo makes some sense. Factor in the narrative, I mean fast-paced game I would imagine like the Lakers have been kind of picking up the pace lately they were sort of like bottom of the league in pace now they're up to 18th this season we know the Pelicans play fast they're uh, seventh in pace this season this game does have a 222 total just looking at these six games on the slate like I imagine that's probably kind of that's probably going to come in second maybe third on the slate behind Portland uh, Washington and behind like Philadelphia Houston so I definitely like this spot for Lonzo I like the revenge narrative I think there is a little bit of a narrative there for him uh, Alvin Gentry was praising Lonzo as well so you got a little bit of a coach speak here I think they're going to continue to give Lonzo pretty big minutes so I like him in the mid-range at 6k we'll definitely need to watch the status of um, Bradley Beal Bradley Beal's listed as questionable today if Bradley Beal is out we know the beneficiaries there Jordan McRae Isaiah Thomas these guys would benefit if um, Beal is out we'll just kind of have to watch that heading into Friday night or hopefully we'll get some update sometime in the afternoon uh, but I do want to talk about Marcus Smart. So like I said, I'm assuming that Kimba is going to be out today and we most likely get Marcus Smart starting at point guard. 5,100 on DraftKings does feel like a little bit too cheap of a price tag for Smart, especially in a matchup against the Hawks. Uh, Smart's really nicely priced on Yahoo as well, only $18 at shooting guard. So if you look at his rates this season with Kimba off the floor, he's actually been pretty productive this season with Kimba off. He does see a pretty big boost in his like fantasy point per minute average. Uh, so looking at Smart's differential, he sees a 4% bump in usage, average, averages 0.2 fantasy points more per minute when Kimba's off. Uh, he's played 218 minutes this season with Kimba off the floor, 21% usage rate, averaging just over a fantasy point per minute with a 23% assist percentage, which is second highest on the team behind Gordon Hayward. Uh, so I actually have a lot of interest in Marcus Smart today, assuming that Kimba's out. Obviously, we'll need to watch that. This is a 7 o'clock game. This is the, one of the first games on the slate, so we will know before lock if Kimba is in or out. If he's out, I like Marcus Smart quite a bit. I'm assuming he starts at point guard, and they move, like, semi Ojale into the starting lineup. They'll probably just kind of shift everybody down. They'll start, like, Smart, Brown, 
um, Hayward. Um, that's probably that'll be their starting lineup. They'll go Smart, Brown, Hayward, Tatum, and then Daniel Tice. So never mind about this Semi Ojale thing. He won't start. Like I don't think they're going to start Brad Wanamaker. I imagine he's just going to play backup point guard and probably get like 24, 26 minutes. I mean he's cheap, but I probably won't be going there. Mainly just want to target Smart. Uh, but then other point guards, like uh, DJ Augustine's coming off his best game of the season against the Wizards. 46 DraftKings points in 31 minutes. He's up to 5K on DK. I think it is worth noting that Jonathan Isaac is going to be out for this game, and we don't know the status of Aaron Gordon yet. Aaron Gordon is questionable. Like, if Isaac and Gordon are both out, I think we could see DJ Augustine get similar minutes today. I mean, he's 5K, so he's not like a must-play by any means. Definitely not a core play either. Like, I would prefer Smart for $100 more, uh, but I don't think... Uh, I don't think Augustine's just like a full fade for me. I'm definitely going to have some interest in him, especially if Aaron Gordon's out. It's going to be really interesting to see what their starting lineup is if both or if Gordon's out because we know Isaac's going to be out. Like, I don't know if they're going to start Terrence Ross, if they're going to start maybe Augustine alongside um, Foltz, or maybe they move like Keen Birch into the starting lineup. We'll just kind of have to wait and see there. Not really sure what they're going to do here against the Heat. Uh, this is a 7 o'clock game as well, so we will know that before lock whether Gordon's in or out um, I guess ish you could target if Bradley Beal's out like I said Brad Wanamaker probably gets a lot of run as the backup point guard he's 3900 he's not a terrible value play but me personally probably won't be somewhere I go I guess if um, Alfred Payton's out you could target D or you could target Frank Nielakina I'm pretty sure Dennis Smith Jr's already been ruled out for this game I think he's questionable yeah, he's questionable for Friday, so if both DSJ and Alfred Payton are out, I mean, Frank Nielakina is going to have to play minutes. They're going to need his defense to defend, like, Rubio and Booker. 3,200, like, he could honestly be in play on the slate. We'll kind of have to wait and see with that stat, or with that news. This is a 9 o'clock game, so I'm not sure if we're going to have that news before lock. Uh, but the Knicks this season, even though, like, their rotation's tough to predict, they've actually been pretty good with, like, uh, injury updates and stuff. So maybe we'll get some update, like, after shoot around. Let's go ahead and move over to shooting guard now. We'll talk about this position. So a shooting guard, obviously a key injury to watch up top here is Bradley Beal. Questionable heading into Friday. Really, I have no idea if he plays or not. I mean, it was if you just read the blurb here, it was reported earlier that Beal may rest one of the Wizards' next three games, and Friday's matchup might be the one. So who knows? I mean, I'd say he probably sits. I mean, he only played 30 minutes last game against the Magic, which was kind of odd. I mean, usually we see Beal play bigger minutes. He wasn't like that great in that game either. 30, uh, 39 DK points in 30 minutes. That game was a blowout, so I guess that's why he kind of only played 30 minutes. If I had to guess, I would say he probably doesn't play tonight, but this is another 7 o'clock game, so we'll get this news before lock. Uh, luckily, we have three games at 7 o'clock tonight, and then we got one at 8, one at 9, and one, one at 10.30. And really the only injury news we're waiting on in the late night games is the uh, situation with the Knicks point guards, Payton and DSJ, we're going to need to keep an eye on. I don't think we're wait, waiting on anything else in those late night games. I guess uh, um, the Suns starting lineup, see if they start DeAndre Ayton, that'll be something we need to keep an eye on. But all the injury news that we're going to have to wait on is coming from these three seven o'clock games. So we'll get all that news before lock. If Beal's out, the main beneficiaries, I mean, you guys know it's going to be like Ish Smith, uh, Ish Smith, I'm blanking. Isaiah Thomas, Gary Payton, those guys, Jordan McRae. I think my favorite targets there would definitely be like McRae, Thomas. McRae and Thomas, one and two, and then probably Payton third-ish fourth. But all four guys would get more usage, more opportunity as well, more minutes just in general. Uh, but you got like Drew at this position, 7,400 you could look to. Even if Kimba sits, Jalen Brown's up to 7,700. So I don't think I'm going to be playing Jalen Brown at that salary. I'd rather play Drew Holiday for $300 less. Uh, so even though he'll pick up more usage today, potentially with Kemba out, $7,700, really tough price tag to pay for Jalen Brown, just in my opinion. Uh, McRae, Troy Brown, two guys to keep an eye on. If Beal is out, those are guys worth considering. Specifically, McRae, I would like the most, just because he's been like the most productive player with Beal off the floor. Uh, I do want to talk about a value play here, though. I guess two value plays. Gary Payton, if Beal is out, is worth considering at $4,300. I guess it is a bit of a concern, though, that his minutes have been way down recently. Last two games, only 14 and 10 minutes. I mean, that's definitely a concern. He's still been starting. Like, I think he started, or I can't remember if he started the last game with Bill out. They started him as shooting guard. I know he started, like, one of these games and only played, like, 14 minutes. So, he's probably, like, my least. Honestly, I'd probably rank Ish ahead of him. He's, he might be my least favorite Washington guy today. 
it's just really hard to predict his minutes, especially, I mean, if Beal plays, I have no interest, but if Beal is out, I still don't think he's going to get, like, big minutes. They're, they're probably going to give it the, some of his minutes to Ish uh, coming off the bench. But Terrence, uh, Terrence Ross is the value play I want to talk about here. So he's 4K on DraftKings, really, really cheap today. Um, I did have quite a bit of interest in him on the last slate against Washington. He had a decent game, wasn't great. I mean, he had 20 DraftKings points in 24 minutes, had 15 points, shot 6 for 10 from the field, 3 for 6 from 3, no rebounds, no assists, had one block and one steal. Like, it wasn't that good of a game from Ross, but he did lose some minutes in this game, late in the game due to blowout. He only played 24 minutes. Normally we get like 26 to 28 minutes, close to 30 minutes from Terrence Ross. Potentially with no Aaron Gordon, no Jonathan Isaac today, like I think Terrence Ross is definitely going to pick up more usage. Maybe they move him, to the, move him into the starting lineup. That'll be something we need to watch heading into Friday night. Especially if Gordon is out, maybe they move like a one dude to the four and they start Terrence Ross at the three. Honestly, I have no idea, but I expect him to get more usage coming off the bench. We can look at his rates this season. I mean, his rates aren't great, but I'm pretty sure he's averaged close to a fantasy point per minute, if I'm not mistaken, with Gordon and Isaac both off the floor. So let's take both of them off the floor. See what kind of sample size we get. We know Isaac's going to be out. It's just going to be a matter of does uh, Gordon play either or does Gordon also play so Terrence Ross 207 minutes this season with both Gordon and Isaac off the floor 22% usage rate averaging 0.8 fantasy points per minute so I mean not great numbers but he's 4k on DraftKings. it's not like you need him to put up 40 DK points like even if he gets 25 30 DK points that's still pretty good for 4k I mean Ross has the upside especially when his shot has fallen Pace up spot against the Heat. Uh, I know the Heat are, or never mind. I always, I keep thinking like the Heat are a fast-paced team, but they've started to really slow down. They're down to 21st in pace. We know the Magic play slow, 27th in pace. So really, it's not going to be a great pace game. It's just the uh, opportunity and increase in minutes for Ross, increase in usage with potentially Gordon and Isaac out today. So at 4K, he's in play for me. I do like him as an early look value. He's minimum salary on Yahoo, so I think you can also consider him over there. Shooting guard, $10. I like him as of now. Maybe if we get some clarity on some injury news with some other teams, like if uh, Hayward's out or if, um, if Kimba's out, maybe that'll open up different value plays. If Bradley Beal's out, maybe we can find other ways to go. But for right now, I'm fine putting Terrence Ross in uh, as kind of like a placeholder. And if we need to make changes, I'll make some changes over on Patreon. I'll let you guys know all my updated thoughts on the slate once we get some updated injury news on Friday afternoon. But that's probably it for me at Shooting Guard. For cheap values here, I mean, I did want to mention Tyler Hero. Like, Tyler Hero is really cheap on DraftKings, 3700 Like, you never know how many minutes this guy's going to get. Most nights, he's probably going to play close to 30 minutes. Obviously, his, like, fantasy production is always going to be, like, inconsistent. He's a very scoring-dependent player. But, I mean, he's 3700 There's plenty of upside for Hero to pay off this salary. So, I did want to mention him as a value I do feel a little bit better with Terrence Ross, but I think Hero, it would be in my player pool, especially if I was playing multiple lineups today. But moving on to small forward, uh, LeBron I do like today. I just prefer James Harden straight up, uh, like with those two guys going up against each other, like Harden versus James. I prefer Harden, but obviously different positions. You can roster Hart, or you can roster James at small forward. Maybe we get enough value to where we could play both. It is a great spot for LeBron against the Pelicans team that – Pretty fast paced this season, uh, seventh in pace, defensive rating, bottom in the league. I mean, they're 26 in defensive rating, bottom four in, or bottom fifth in the league. Definitely a great spot for LeBron. Jason Tatum, Ben Simmons, uh, Jimmy Butler, these guys are probably going to be fades for me. Even if Kimba's out, like I expect Jason Tatum to be very productive with Kimba off the floor, but he's 8,200 on DraftKings. Like he's not a must play by any means. I mean, he's going to need to get near 50 DraftKings points to be like a good tournament play at that salary. I just don't know if Tatum has that kind of upside. Like, I don't know what his potential is. Like, if we play this slate out 100 times with uh, with Kimba out, like, how many times does Tatum score 50-plus DK points? Maybe 15, 20% of the time. So, I'll probably be looking elsewhere at small forward. I think the mid-range has some options. Uh, Gordon Hayward I do like quite a bit. If I'm going to go to somebody from the Celtics, it's probably going to be Gordon Hayward between, like, Brown, Tatum, and Hayward. Especially when you factor in salary, I like Hayward the most at 7K on DraftKings. Uh, he's been really good this season with Kimba off the floor. We can look at his rates. He does see a pretty decent boost in his uh, just overall fantasy production. Uh, so just this season, 
Hayward has played 101 minutes with Kimba off the floor, averaging just over a fantasy point per minute with a 22% usage rate, 28% assist percentage. Numbers honestly weren't as good as I thought they were. He's a plus 1% bump in usage. Uh, he's, his fantasy point per minute average actually goes down, but I mean, it's not much of a sample size, only 101 minutes. I would expect as you get more of a sample size with Hayward playing without Kimba, like his numbers are going to improve. He's going to get to handle the ball more. His assist percentage will go up. I mean, he does lead the team in assist percentage with Kimba off the floor. So I do like a, Hayward quite a bit at 7K. On Yahoo, I think he really stands out as one of the best small forward plays at only $23. Like, even if Kimba plays, I still think Hayward's a great option at $23. If Kimba is out, Hayward is by far the top small forward over on Yahoo. Great matchup for these guys against the Hawks. Uh, we know how bad the Hawks, the Hawks are defensively. 28th in defensive rating. Pretty fast-paced team as well. They rank 8th in pace this season. Uh, if Kimba's out, I think it's much more likely this game stays close as well. So I do like Gordon Hayward uh, quite a bit on today's slate. Uh, Kelly Oubre has been like absolutely crushing recently. Over 45 or 45 or more DraftKings points in three straight games. He's playing huge minutes right now. He's been shooting really well from the field, which I think is eventually going to come back down to earth. I mean, 64%, 52%, 57% from the field just the last three games. Like he, I just don't, I don't want to chase Kelly Oubre like these shooting performances from him. Eventually, he's going to have games where he shoots 35, 40% from the field and puts up 30 DK points. Like, it's just going to be so hard to predict those good shooting nights for Oubre. So he's honestly going to be like a fade for me, especially if people are going to look at his game log and sort of chase those games. Like, I'll be looking elsewhere. Honestly, give me Carmelo for 100 less against the, Wizard, uh, against the Wizards. Love this matchup for Melo against the Wizards. Fast-paced game. I mean, you got two of the top 11 teams in pace this season. Portland ranks 11th. The Wizards rank 3rd in pace. We know how bad the Wizards are defensively. Uh, dead last in defensive rating this season. I was really high on Melo on the last slate. He was pretty good for his salary. 35 DraftKings points at 5,900, played 31 minutes. Most nights, we're going to see Melo play about 36 to 38 minutes. That's what he's been playing in competitive games this season. Right now, this game does have a, I believe it's a five-point spread. Yeah, five-and-a-half point spread. Honestly, with with it being a five-and-a-half point spread, that's that makes it seem like Bradley Beal is going to play today. Like I figured Portland would be much heavier favorites if uh, Beal was out. Maybe I'm wrong there, but... Game should stay close. We should get full minutes from Melo. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's third on the team in usage this season behind CJ and Dame. Like, he's taking a ton of shots when he's out there shooting 14, 16, 17 dimes a game. He's rebounding pretty well as well. So I like Melo quite a bit at 6,700. But then other small forwards, I think Fournier is going to get more usage today, especially if Aaron Gordon is out. So you could look to him at 6,100. Troy Brown I'll have some interest in if, um, if Bradley Beal is out. For value, though, it's small forward. Really, no cheap plays. I like this position under 5K. Like, Kuzma's been playing better, but he's up to 5,200. I'll definitely avoid him at, at that salary. Don't really want to go to, like, Hunter or Robinson or Tucker. So, let's go ahead and move over to, uh, to the power forward position. So, at power forward, you got Anthony Davis, 10,300 against the Pelicans. Uh, definitely a good spot here for AD. Not really sure who's going to guard him, if it's going to be Brandon Ingram or Derek Favors, but... Both those guys are going to really struggle to defend Anthony Davis, especially Brandon Ingram. Uh, we saw Davis go off against the Pelicans earlier this season. Revenge game for him. He went back to uh, New Orleans to face his former team. Had a monster game. 61 DraftKings points in 37 minutes. 41 points, 9 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 block, and 3 steals. I mean, AD's definitely one of the better studs to go, up, go for on this slate. Between Harden, LeBron, and Davis... I think when you factor in salary, I would obviously still have Harden number one on DraftKings. I might put Davis ahead of LeBron, though, given that LeBron's $900 more. Both guys project very similarly pretty much on a nightly basis. Uh, so give me Davis over LeBron, but give me Harden over both guys. Harden's by far my favorite stud to go to on DK. On Yahoo, it's just a $1 difference between AD and LeBron. AD 53, LeBron 54. I think that really comes down, or just like those two guys, it just kind of comes down to your roster construction. Like if some good plays open up at power forward, like if there's a lot of value at power forward that opens up, I think you pay up for LeBron. If there's a lot of good guard plays, like right now there looks like uh, looks like there's going to be some good value at guard. So maybe the optimal way to go will be to pay up at power forward for AD. Just kind of have to see how you construct your lineup, which way you want to go. Uh, on DK though, I do prefer AD over LeBron factoring in salary. Uh, but Brandon Ingram also in a revenge game for him against the Lakers, going back to Staples Center to face his former team. 
So you, I guess you could take that narrative into account. Uh, Julius Randle actually do like quite a bit here against the Suns. Julius Randle been playing much better as of late. Been getting huge minutes, just been way more productive. We're seeing him play 36, 37 minutes, uh, 35 minutes in competitive games. Only played 30 minutes last game against Portland, but that was because the Knicks actually blew out Portland. And I mean, the Knicks are, I'm pretty sure the Knicks have, haven't lost yet in 2020. I think they played three games in the new decade or the new, new year. Let's see. Oh, they played, well, they played January 1st and they they won that game. I mean, they, they've won three straight games. Like the Knicks have actually been playing much better recently. Randall's been balling against the Suns. I like this matchup for him. I think he's going to get 34, 36 minutes today. I think this game's going to stay close. On Yahoo, he's um, $33 at power forward. I think he's one of the better power forward plays, like $20 cheaper than Anthony Davis. Really like going to Randall. Uh, he's cheaper than John Collins. I do slightly prefer him over Collins. I think Julius Randall definitely in play today on both sides. One of my favorite power forwards to go to. On DK, though, you can play Hayward at power forward, who I talked about I like quite a bit, especially if uh, Kimba's out today. Derek Favors, I have some interest in against the Lakers. He's 6,200, power forward and center eligible on DraftKings. Uh, we're starting to see Derek Favors get big minutes, 30 minutes in three of his last, or yeah, three of his last four games. Got 35 minutes last game against Houston. Uh, we know Favors is going to be very productive when he gets the minutes. Like he's a, a fantasy point per minute kind of guy. Hasn't played the Lakers yet this season. He was out earlier this season when they faced the Lakers. Uh, we know this is a Lakers team that plays big. Like they usually have one of Davis, uh, McGee, or Dwight on the floor at all times. So I think we're going to get probably 30 to 32 minutes from Derek Favors. He's a guy that averages a fantasy point per minute. Definitely projects well even at 6,200. So I like him at power forward quite a bit. I do prefer him over all the guys in that price range. Like Horford, even I guess Gordon's worth talking about. I didn't mention him, but if Jonathan, or we know Jonathan Isaac's going to be out, but if Gordon plays with Isaac out, I do expect Gordon to get more usage, just more opportunity overall. So 5,700, he would be in play. Let me actually look at the Magic's rates this season with Isaac off the floor, see if Gordon gets a boost. I would imagine he was, or I would imagine he would, but we can actually check it. Probably they're probably they will probably shift. Uh, or, well, Gordon's been playing power forward, so never mind that he'd still start at power forward. Uh, but Gordon this season has played 420 minutes with Isaac off the floor, averaging nearly a fantasy point per minute, 0.94 fantasy points per minute, 21% usage rate, 17% assist percentage, 11% near 12% rebound percentage. Looking at the differential, uh, let's see if I can find Aaron Gordon. It really hasn't affected him. Barely seen any bumps in his numbers, which is actually kind of surprising. I would expect he's more productive with Isaac off the floor. I think it is a little bit of a small boost for him. I mean, he's 5,700 on DraftKings, so he would be in play for me at that salary uh, if he's able to go today and not limited. But that'll be something we have to watch just heading into Friday night slate. Hopefully, we should get some word on that uh, after shoot around. But yeah, I think that's it for Power Forward. I think we covered everything here that I see. So let's go ahead. And move on to center. Uh, so at the center position, we do have a Hassan Whiteside at the top, 9,500. I love this spot for Hassan Whiteside. I'm um, on DraftKings. He's really tough to get in at 9,500, I think. I don't think he's going to be like a core play for me at that salary. Like, I mean, he, he's a great play in this matchup, but you're going to need him to put up, I would say, over 50 DraftKings points, if not more, to even be a good play at this salary. Obviously, Whiteside has that kind of upside in this matchup. I mean, we've seen him go for over 50 DraftKings points, like, Four and four of his last ten games, like he's got the upside in him. On Yahoo, though, he's fifty-one or forty-one dollars. He's three dollars cheaper than Embiid, just five dollars more than Vooch. I think if I'm going to go to Whiteside, it's definitely going to be on Yahoo at forty-one. I think it's much easier to get him in over there. I mean, we know how good this matchup is for centers. If you look at like any DVP statistics, I'm pretty sure the Wizards allow like the second or third most fantasy points to centers this season, dead last in defensive rating. If we look at rebound percentage, the Wizards are dead last in rebound percentage. They really struggle on the glass. This is definitely a team you can really like kill on the glass. So great spot for Whiteside. Tough to get him in on DK at that salary. On Yahoo at 41, I think it's much easier to build around him uh, at his Yahoo salary. I still, honestly though, I think I'd still prefer him over Joel Embiid. That might be a bit of a hot take, but I just like this matchup so much more for Whiteside. I just like that game in general. Going to be a fast-paced game. I think there's 55, close to 60 point upside for him in this spot. But if I'm not going to white side on DK, Randall, I talked about, I really like. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, someone I want to talk about. He's probably one of my favorite plays today. Only 7,300 on DraftKings. And over on Yahoo, he's only $25 over here. Uh, so we saw DeAndre Ayton did um, 
played big minutes last game against the Lakers. He's played two games since coming back from his ankle injury. First game on December 30th against Portland. He came off the bench in that game. They said they were going to limit him, and he only played 20 minutes, had 20 DK points. Last game against the Lakers, he was not limited. They came out and said he's not going to have a minutes limit, but he still came off the bench. But he played 32 minutes, had 41 DraftKings points. It is to be determined if he starts or not today, but since he had no minutes limit that game, I imagine he's going to have no minutes limit today. If Aiton starts, I'd feel pretty good projecting him to play about 34 to 36 minutes. I mean, in close games, like game or the first game of the season, which he started and played like the game, I mean, the game wasn't really competitive, but he started and played 33 minutes. Like, I think most nights we're going to see Aiton start and play probably 34, 35 minutes. Against the Knicks, definitely a good matchup. I like DeAndre Ayton a ton today. I think he is a bit underpriced on both sides, especially on Yahoo where he's $25. I think he's clearly one of the best center options at $25. Like, I'm assuming he moves back into the starting lineup today. Even if he doesn't, I think he's still going to play pretty big minutes off the bench. And we've seen that they will play him and Aaron Baines alongside each other. They could definitely do that in this matchup given how big the Knicks play. Uh, so I love Ayton on today's slate. He's been really productive this season when given the minutes. I know he's averaged like, I think it's 1.2, maybe 1.25 fantasy points per minute. I can look at the Suns rates this season. He's only played a small sample size because he's been injured so much and the, sp the suspension as well. Uh, he's played 109 minutes this season, averaged nearly 1.3 fantasy points per minute. So really good race for DeAndre Ayton. Good matchup, this, or good matchup today. The price is down on DK. On both sides, it's down. It's, it really hasn't adjusted for like what his role is now. So really like DeAndre Ayton. Also on DraftKings, I really like Clint Capella as well. I think Clint Capella stands out as one of the more underpriced plays on today's slate. Like Capella should never be 6,900. Like under 7K, that's just way too cheap of a price tag for Capella. Lately, he's kind of lost minutes due to a blowout like against Denver. Played 30 minutes in that game, but they won by 26. Capella was still productive, though, with 36 DraftKings points in 30 minutes. When they played against Golden State on Christmas Day, he didn't have that great of a game, just 28 DK points in 29 minutes. Uh, but Capella this season has been incredibly productive, gives you a very high floor. Like, even on his bad games, he's given you 30 to 35 DK points. He's got 45, 50-point upside, especially if he can, like, block some shots. Like, we've seen the guy has, like, potential to go for 20 and 20. You know he's a great rebounder. I know he's, like, pretty sure he's top two or top three in the league in rebounds per game this season. But let's check his rates real quick, see how many, or see his fantasy point per minute average. Pretty sure it's like 1.25 or 1.3, close to that number. Uh, so this season, Clint Capella has averaged a 1.12, a little bit lower than I thought, 1.12 fantasy points per minute, but does have a 21% rebound percentage. We know Capella's not going to be a high usage player, but he gets his damage done on the glass. He can score as well. I mean, he's pretty much a lock for a double-double. He's averaged a double-double this season. Yeah, really like Capella today. I think he's one of the better options on today's slate. 6,900, even against a, Embiid, even though it's a tough matchup against Embiid, like, they're going to use Capella anyway. Capella's going to play huge minutes here. They need his size against Embiid. He's their best shot at slowing down Embiid. So I think Capella's really cheap on DraftKings. I think he's probably like $500 to $1,000 too cheap today. Really stands out as one of the better center options just in terms of, like, points per dollar. Uh, but then you got favors you could go to who I talked about. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, I would love, but until he starts, like I, it's just hard for me to pay near 6K for him with him coming off the bench. It's ho it's so hard to trust to trust his minutes. Like he got 27 minutes last game off the bench. Some nights he'll play 25 minutes. Some nights he'll play 30 minutes. Some nights he'll play 22 minutes. Like we just don't know with Mitchell Robinson right now. I like the matchup against the Suns, but I wish we could get him starting. If he would start, that'd make me more interested in him. I'll definitely be shying away from them, though, at 5,800. I don't expect to get much of him. Uh, Ennis Cantor, 5,500, coming off like a monster game last game against the Hornets. 47 DraftKings points in 23 minutes. He was incredibly productive in that game. Had a double-double with six blocks. Like, I'm just not going to chase that game. I mean, Ennis Cantor is only getting like 22 to 23 minutes a game right now. If he averages two fantasy points per minute, then so be it. But at 5,500... I'm not going to play Cantor at this salary when he's only getting 20 to 22 minutes, even in a good matchup. Uh, Ian Mahimi, I think, is worth talking about. 5,100 here against Portland. Like, Mahimi's minutes have been really inconsistent this season. I think this is definitely a spot, though, where we're going to see him play pretty big minutes. Like, to def I don't know who they're going to use to defend Whiteside. I would imagine it's going to be Mahimi. I know they've been given uh, Pachegniks or whatever this dude's name is, it or whatever his name is. I don't even know how to spell his name, to be honest with you. I'm just going to have to look him up or 
I'll just kind of scroll down until I can find him. I know they've been giving him minutes off the bench. Uh, and J.S. Pozeknix, yeah, I have no idea how to say that. Um, he got 24 minutes off the bench last game against the Magic. Like, I'm not sure, like, how big this guy is, if he's their best shot at slowing down Whiteside. I would imagine it's going to be Mahimi. So, I think Mahimi probably plays, like, 26 to 28 minutes today. I mean, he's been productive this season when given minutes. He's got upside, so 5,100. Not the worst play at center, but I feel like center is going to be a position I really try and get up to, like, Aiton, Capella, the guys at the top I really like. Um, obviously, like, Davis you could go to, Whiteside, Embiid, Randall. It's probably where my center exposure is going to go to. Um, I did want to talk about Keem Birch, 3,900 on DraftKings. We saw him get a good amount of minutes last game against Washington. Played 26 minutes in a game where Jonathan Isaac got hurt and where Aaron Gordon was out. If Gordon is out today, we know Isaac's going to be out. I don't think Keem Birch would start, but he probably will get a lot of minutes off the bench, probably 24 to 26 minutes. He's $10 on Yahoo. He's 3,900 on DK. I mean, he would definitely be in play as a value if Gordon's out. If Gordon plays... I think a lot of those minutes that Birch would get would probably uh, go away. So really going to be dependent on if Gordon plays or not. Maybe they start Birch alongside Vucevic. I doubt they would, but I guess we kind of have to wait and see there. So yeah, I think we covered everything, guys, for the six-game slate. Broke it all down position by position. Um, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Hopefully it helped you. Uh, if you enjoyed, drop a like down below. Before we get out of here, I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Ring that notification bell so that way you get notified every time I upload. Uh, as always, you can follow me on Twitter, link down below, at DFS by Noah. Also, you can check out my exclusive content that I have available on Patreon, patreon.com slash DFS by Noah. I upload a ton of ex uh, exclusive content over there throughout the day. My article, my updated core plays, my lineup building video, post NBA content Monday through Friday, and I do have NFL stuff going up uh, throughout the week. I did upload my NFL article on Thursday night and my cash game player pool lineup building video for the NFL slate. We'll be going up Friday night, and then my final thoughts video will be going up Saturday morning. Uh, so check all that out. Link down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. Good luck tonight. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.